Democratic polls, who is up and who's down, plus who won the two-night event. And by one, we mean who got the most mentions in the media afterwards. So Team Rising is here to dig in. Antoine Seawright is a Democratic strategist. He served as senior advisor to Hillary Clinton in South Carolina during her 2016 run. And Emily Jashinsky is a culture editor at The Federalist. Welcome to you both. Thanks, Augur. Always great to see you guys. Awesome. So we have a very interesting news story from Politico about the most mentions in the debate. Turns out that Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren bounced out of the second round of the debates with the most uh, network news and cable news coverage. What do you think about that, Antoine? Was it Bernie that was being uh, stifled out by the media, or what do you think Warren rightfully deserved to be talked about most? So a Biden, I think, makes sense. So, so a yeah. couple of things. On the first night, I think Elizabeth Warren demonstrated mm -hmm. why she is probably going knack for knack with Bernie um, about being second place to Biden. She, for the past two debates, um, have all arguably ruled the debate stage in the conversation and she's uh, displayed why people have this new love and affection for her. Mm -hmm. I know this may uh, not feel so good on this uh, platform, <laughs> yeah. here, but I yeah. think she has um, arguably taken up space on the highway that Bernie Sanders occupied in the previous election. Yeah. As it relates to Biden, it's no surprise. He is the front runner, so the gun, the political guns and knives were coming at him left and right, and he continues to demonstrate that he can take the heat uh, and still keep a beat. Mm -hmm. um, in a moment, I'll tell you why you're so wrong. <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> I can do that too. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think? What do you think, Emily? Emily? Yeah. Okay, so I think it makes sense that Elizabeth Warren would get so many mentions. Not only did she dominate the, the debate stage, but she also was, I'm not alone. I think, yeah. very re put, putting forward something that is very relevant for the primary as a whole. Like, this is the angle that the primary is going in. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that is very important, and that's why she can start. Well, it's true. So she's, like you just said, she's occupying space on the Bernie Sanders highway. And so she's demonstrating that there's this lane that she's going to dominate that's going to run parallel to Biden's lane. So it's here's like a the fusionism. problem. It's like a here's, fusionism. Here's the problem, though, with. Yeah. with both of you saying like they're in the yeah. same lane, mm -hmm. is that their coalition of voters is like completely different. Biden so Elizabeth and Warren, Warren and Bernie. Yeah. Uh, Warren and Bernie, okay. Um, Elizabeth Warren appeals much more to white educated liberals, basically higher up on the income scale. Bernie Sanders appeals more to multiracial working class, $50,000 and under. Both of them have sort of mixed appeal. Young voters are very strong for Bernie. Mm -hmm. Warren has kind of, um, appeal across age groups, but their coalitions are very different. So Biden and Bernie actually have more in common in terms of coalition. Warren has much more in common with Kamala Harris and Pete Buttigieg's coalition, frankly, than she does with Bernie. But if you're comparing yeah. the quote unquote progressive movement mm -hmm. sure. versus where Biden is from a similar sure. perspective, sure. I think Warren and Bernie are, are more in the same They are much that's more necessary. ideologically that, similar. That, yeah. But in terms of how voters think about this, that's not really but, how they're approaching But I think it. It, if the race was, were to slim down today, I mm -hmm. think the coalition between Warren and Bernie will probably unite quicker. Than the, for them to get together that's, more so than Biden. It's, it's, that's that's not necessarily show. because the second, the larger second choice for Biden is Bernie, and same vice versa. What do you think? Emily? Well, yeah. I think also what Elizabeth Warren is doing is kind of going for that Bernie voter who yeah. is maybe lower income um, and in a lower education bracket. And so I think part of what she's doing is making the argument to that person, to the potential Trump voter, to the potential mm -hmm. Bernie Trump, maybe the, the longtime Rust Belt Democrat. Well, if yeah. you could vote, I think her lane is electability. Her lane is electability. But let me tell, right. let me tell you why my argument yeah. I feel so strong about. You won't hear Biden raising his hand for Medicare for All. Mm -hmm. You won't see him kind of raising his hand or even putting forth policy prescriptions that you hear from Bernie or right. Warren. So I think there's a wall of disconnect. Now, I think overall, the same goal is true, be the nominee, beat Donald Trump. And I mm -hmm. think, for the most part, that's true. But I'm saying from a pure just policy uh, advocacy position, I think there's some differences. Well, there's no doubt that Warren needs to expand her coalition because yeah. you cannot win the Democratic Party primary with white people, and that's basically mm -hmm. who's supporting her right totally. now. So there's no doubt about that. But if that is her play to go after Sanders voters, at this point, it's not really working. I mean, we have two new polls mm -hmm. post debate. Um, they're pretty different in what they show, but both of them have Biden number one. Bernie number two. One of them actually, um, this new Reuters poll, has Biden and Bernie in a statistical tie with Elizabeth Warren down at what, 9%? Well, they, the Reuters did not release all their information. They just said none of the other three, tw 23 candidates got received more than, 9%. more than 9% in the poll. So 9% or stunning. less. stunning. But we have Morning Consult, and we should note, that has 32% of primary voters said they still want to see Joe Biden at the top of the 2020 ticket. 
and we see Bernie Sanders clocking in around the 18 percent number there. Things are all over the map. What do you think? I don't know about that. I yeah. think Biden has been the one consistent feather in the cap yeah. um, for this Democratic primary. Sure. But it speaks to a couple things. Number one, it speaks to if debates were an indication mm -hmm. uh, of who's going to win an election, Hillary Clinton would be president because I believe she beat Donald Trump like a drum mm -hmm. every single debate. The second thing is there's a disconnect between the social media bubble, the coastal elites, and yeah. those of us who are in this business who spend our time sure. mm -hmm. um, talking about this every day. Everyday people are not paying attention to the things that people retweet or that they post on Facebook about how bad right. Joe Biden did in the, in the debate Absolutely. or all those yeah. things. There's a big disconnect. What people care about, one is beating Donald Trump and two is uniting this party because they've taken a chance before and they don't want to take a chance again and Biden seems to be safe plus he speaks to the needs and hearts of people. I think that's yeah. right. What do you think, Emily? Well, no, I mean, yeah. I, I agree with yeah. that completely and that's why, you know, a study on who gets the most mentions on cable news after a debate Bait. I think, I mean, it's interesting to sort of the Beltway person, but it really means so little because the people who are mm -hmm. tuning into cable news is already that like smaller group of about 10 million people who watch the debates, let alone, I mean, I don't know how many people in this country actually watched six hours of <laughs> debates. But see, last I, week. I would yeah. counter that that's exactly why the coverage of it is mm. so important because people don't watch the debates necessarily True. and make up their well, own minds. Media. That's how so I look they at get, it. So yeah. you know, they get whatever is kind of the top line takeaway mm -hmm. from cable That's news, true. from the networks, from the headlines, and so their impressions are very much shaped by mm -hmm. what is said after the debates. But KB, again, if all of that is true, Mm. The headline said Biden underperformed. Yeah. They didn't say a, that. Not this time. Uh, some of them did. The first time yeah. it did, some, and he yeah. dropped in the yeah. polls. But and, he, and, came, he steadily climbed back true. up over the course yeah. of the year. He yeah. went right back up to the top yeah. when it's all said that. So yeah. no matter the coverage, whether it's pre-debate, during the debate, or post-debate, there's a big disconnect between some of the realities. Biden, Look, Biden's the people, true. Yeah. The people who need, who come out in Democratic primaries, I'll speak to black voters because uh -huh. I'm the resident black man on this panel. The people who show up who look like me, they're worried about how they're going to feed their families, mm -hmm. how they're going to pay the light bill. They're worried about whether, you know, Larry's college tuition is going to be taken care of because he goes to school in a couple months. Yeah. They're not worried about how many shots people take at Biden because yeah. he's not for Medicare for sure. all. Sure. Do you think, um, I mean, do you think, Emily, that these debates are really going to move the needle at all? Because you've got a lot of candidates. We're going to talk about Cory Booker um, yeah. after a quick break, but I would put him in this category. A lot of candidates who are looking to have their breakout mm -hmm. moment at a debate. Kamala had one. Mm -hmm. She got a little bump. And then, to your point, Antoine, it went away. Right back down. So, do these things really move the needle? Or is the field, I mean, do we basically have the field of Biden, mm -hmm. Bernie, and then as a kind of next year, Warren and Harris. Yeah, I love this question. I'm excited to talk about this because it's huge. Because I mean, <laughs> yeah. look at Julian Castro. He is yeah. the perfect case study. Yeah. He had his moment in that first round of he debates, did. and nothing, nothing happened, happened, for happened, happened for him. Before. Nothing happened for any of the candidates so far that had big moments. Like none of these centrist candidates who had their sort of like centrist uh -huh. champion moments. It did absolutely nothing. Delaney's for them. still a one percent. I've, I've, I've said this right. on the show before, which is that you either are Bernie light or you're Biden light. And right. so at that point, it's like, why wouldn't I just pick the best version of both? Yeah, and the original. That's how I look at The it. primary yeah. debates mattered big time for Republicans in 2015 yes. and 2016. That is just not happening in Did this they? case. So that's that's point I oh, Trump, oh, they, Trump they rose from really the televised to televised debates, and that is not happening. Well, yeah. I'm, uh, performance yeah. wise, because yes. uh, one could argue if you're in this business. Marco Rubio, debate. Yeah. What, yeah. What I'm telling you, he lost New Hampshire ended. because yeah. of the debate. What debate. I'm saying is, yeah. one could argue that Trump did not perform well. He may have moved the needle, but he did not perform well about how we. For Trump voters, he did. How we traditionally judge. Judge performing yeah. well in the debate. And remember, a bump does not necessarily mean a lump. Kamala had her bump, it did not become right. a bump. Performing yeah. well is not dunking on your opponent, it's differentiating yourself from everybody mm -hmm. else. In that respect, Bernie is the winner of the first night debate, in my opinion, and Biden is the winner in the second night because Bernie, every single question on the stage was, "Do you agree with Bernie Sanders? Both, and why are you frankly, different from Bernie Sanders?" Frankly, both nights were all framed That's around, right. "Are you with Bernie or not?" That's right. Policy position, no lie. That's right. I, you, you but with not... Biden, Biden was the only one to be like, "No, I'm not for Medicare for." I mean, John Delaney, but again, <laughs> yeah, a Bernie, yeah. this is a this Pick is a Lumber. Bernie, li this is a Biden like candidate where it's like, "Why would I? Why would pick I go these with people Delaney?" Listen to that when, when I have I the former this. vice president of the United States. So to me, that is kind of how I think it's all. Here's yeah, the most agree. key yeah. element through all these polls. Yeah. The fact of the matter is Biden's African-American yeah. support it rock solid. has yeah. not moved and arguably in some places yeah. like <laughs> South Carolina who would decide who our next nominee right. will be. Mm -hmm. It's gotten stronger. Hold Antoine that thought. Has given us Hold that thought. Perfect yeah. segue. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take yes. a quick break. Yeah. We are going to talk about South Carolina right after this.